Since landing in the interstice, the Stormcasts have found themselves particularly lost. Without a way to return to Azir, their once eternal souls were forfeit and experiencing mortality once more was unnerving. Through careful planning and arcane ritual, they constructed a way to overcome this by collecting the wayward soul to return to their home city-state of Harmonia in the Garan Lush. However, one final component was missing, the soul of an elusive blink beast. When one happened to be discovered within the Beastland Wastes, the Stormcasts were quick to seek it out, but they were not alone, as Kallax Shadowhell Admiral of the Caradron Overlord fleet also sought the rare soul as a means to create a more powerful form of transportation. The two forces collided, and only through determination and luck that the Stormcasts were able to claim the Beast Soul, and finally could become an effective force in the Interstice once more. Meanwhile, the Skaven had begun excavating within the Pyrelands, seeking out a deposit of Warpstone hidden far beneath the Burning Reach. Veskit Falfang hoped to use this to create a path back towards the mortal realms proper, as well as to create powerful relics to conquer the interstice. Their mining attracted the attention of Kazgrim Bloodspawn, a slaughter priest on a pilgrimage of slaughter. Such an incursion could not be overlooked, and the cowardice of the Ratmen seemed to be an affront to the Blood God. The Cornate warriors pushed out the Skaven, sending them scattering across the burning plains. Vatalus, under the direct orders of the Lich King Mortain, began an ambitious plot to establish a new dynasty within the Crystalline Fields. A challenging prospect for the Death Army, as the blinding brilliance of the landscape repelled their advances. In order to establish a foothold, Vatalus took the time to create pockets of shadow and death to invade the land. Their movements did not go unnoticed, as the Stormcast Eternals, led by Iota Darling, attempted to halt the blight in the land. Their intentions missed the mark though, as Vatalus could establish his forces there, and begin his ascent towards the Diamond Apex. Before taking the mountain, Vatalus sought an artifact with which to corrupt the Shining Mountain. This brought them to the ruins of the Radiant Keep. There, the forces of the Night Haunt fought for control over a large piece of Aether Quartz, against the forces of Joseph Geostar. However, the tides of death were too overwhelming, and Vatalus' forces were able to secure the relic he sought. As the procession of the dead ascended towards the Diamond Apex to begin the ritual, the Stormcast made one last effort in an attempt to disperse the army of death and preserve the sanctitude of the peak. But with the stoic defense led by the Lord Executioner Melchior, the Stormcast were repelled as Vatalus completed his task. As the ritual spell came to fruition, a great tremor shook the world of the Interstice to the core. The crystalline facets of the once perfect mount are shattered into countless pieces as an explosion of macabre magic asunders the plain. Clouds of dust took on the visage of Nagash himself as the eruption expands outwards, devouring everything in its path as if in a ravenous hunger. Flesh is stripped away from living creatures, leaving nothing but empty husks of bone and sinew. The souls of countless creatures are swallowed up in the grave tide, which only enriches the swirling magic at the epicenter even more. The diamond apex was no more. Only a crater filled with the swirling maelstrom of malign death magics. The largest piece of the diamond apex toppled and tore through the landscape like a blade through flesh. A wide crevasse formed in its wake. The broken crown of the diamond apex now rests close to the beastland wastes, its once majestic splendor reduced to a dim glow. The brilliant scar shows the path the broken crown took, a canyon flooded by the ocean waters. New settlements have sprung up along the banks of this great gash on the land. As the mountain peak tore through, it left behind great deposits of brilliant gemstones and those economically minded have taken advantage of this new natural trove of minerals. The Sulcus of Vatalus shows the epicenter of this calamity. A deep crater marks where the great mountain once stood. 
death magics concentrates deep within its recesses, with the moaning and wailing of banshees echoing through the surrounding valleys. The explosion also created artificial islands off the coast, dubbed the Phalanges, as well as the Xiphoid Peninsula. Not well explored yet, the armies of death hope to explore and claim these new tracts of land for themselves, and to discover what may lie in these unexplored places. The penumbral lowlands are what remain of the crystalline fields. Without the shining beacon of the diamond apex, the lands have grown far colder and far less bright. The shade of the ever-twilight valleys and the dusk woods continues to pervade and slowly choke out the light. The Ebonfire Bridge, once scorched over by the intense light of the diamond apex, has finally begun to smolder and put itself out. With this land bridge now able to be traversed, the more bellicose denizens of the Pyrelands look across and see new lands to conquer. Off the coast of the Pyrelands and the Ember Isle, small islands have formed from the scattered chunks that rained down from the explosion of the crystalline mountain. These form the Diamond Dust Archipelagos, mineral-rich islands that have caught the attention of many profiteers, if they have the means to weather the firestorm seas. The new sea continues to expand and grow into the etheric ocean. The mountain range continues to seemingly drag the ocean floor upwards to create new lands around it. It is inhospitable at best, as the extremely saline soil prevents most plant life from taking root, and the ocean continuously batters the land as if hoping to reclaim what was once theirs. In the wake of the shattering, the mixing of light and death magics have sent a great many portents across the interstice. With the light of the lands shattered, days have grown shorter, seasons colder, and even the heavens above seem dimmer. So many changes happening at once, it is no wonder that people have picked up these changes as omens of despairing events to come. Many fear what fate has in store for them in this strange isolated realm. Perhaps destruction and death is nigh. Most curiously are the formation of rifts, small temporal portals that blink in and out of existence. Few have ventured through these, and fewer still have returned. Some hope that it may return them to the moral realms, back to a life that they once knew. But those that traverse a rift and return tell of a different tale. Some arrive in an unknown world similar to their own, but strangely warped. Others swear they have experienced a shift in time, going eons into the past and into worlds before even the age of myth. Most concerning are the ones that emerge speaking only nonsense about chaos and the warp. Thank you for viewing our channel. If you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. We also have a Facebook page and Instagram accounts. Links are within the channel banner. Take care and happy wargaming.